Hey, it's Mr. N here, and we are going to do the most missed um, for the semester one final. This is the second worksheet that we have on it. So let's go ahead and start with number one. For number one, it says, if f of x equals e to the fourth, then find f prime of x. So basically what this is right here is this is just a constant. So if I'm finding f prime of a constant, that's just zero. Okay, next, for number two, evaluate each. Okay, so for this first one, what you guys need to recognize is that these are definitions of derivative. The limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So that is just the definition of a derivative. And since that's the definition of a derivative, this is asking me to find the derivative of the cosine of x at pi. So that's all I really need to do there. So I need d dx of cosine of x at the pi value. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and I'm going to plug in my pi, and I end up with 0 as the answer. This one is very similar. This is the derivative of the sine of 2, sorry, the sine of x at x equals 2 pi. Well, the derivative of sine is cosine, and I'm going to plug in my 2 pi value, which is where I need to calculate this, and I'll get the cosine of 2 pi is 1. All right, moving on to number 3. For number 3, it says the integral from negative 3 to negative 1 of the, the square root of 3 times x to the negative 4. Well, over here, what ends up happening is when I'm taking the integral, I'm moving it up a power, which is the opposite of differentiation, where I'm going to subtract a power. Since I'm moving it up a power, I'm going to add a power. This becomes negative 3. So I end up with x equals, or x to the negative 3 power. But now I need to determine, I have a root 3 here, is what I need. If I do the guess and check way to determine this, I will get negative 3, x to the negative 4, but then I still have, I need that. Which means I need to multiply this whole thing by negative 1 third. So the integral of this ends up being that, and you can check it, like I did kind of like guess and check work, by taking the derivative. That's one method. So basically this ends up being root 3 times negative 1 third times x to the negative 3 on the bounds from negative 3 to negative 1. So cleaning this up, we could just put the negative root 3 over 3 on the outside, and I can say this is uh, negative 1 to the negative 3 minus negative 3 to the negative third power. And this ends up being negative root 3 over 3 times, this will be negative 1 minus negative 1 27th, so that will be plus 1 over 27. And that all cleans up in the end to be 26 root 3 over 81 doesn't clean up so nice, but that's where it ends up. All right, so for number four, hopefully this software is not going to give me a hard time today. Yep, it's all moving forward. Okay, so for number four, let's take a look at this. And it says, find the slope of the tangent line to the curve x cubed plus xy squared plus 2x equals 12 at the point 1, negative 3. All right, so I need a slope of a tangent line. Well, that's asking me to take the derivative. And since this has x's and y's in it, I need to differentiate this implicitly. So for the first part here, this becomes 3x squared. So basically, I need the derivative with respect to x of this thing. So that becomes 3x squared plus, now let's do the second part. This is going to be the first times the derivative of the second, which is 2y, y prime. Remember, you could put, instead of y prime, you could put 
dy dx whenever we take a derivative of y. Why don't we do it for the x? Well, x prime means dx over dx, which just reduces out. But for the y's, I need to have that y prime, or dy dx. Either way is fine. Okay, so we did that part first times derivative of the second. Now we need to do plus the second, which is y squared times the derivative of the first, which is 1. And now I need to take the derivative on the 12 over there. Oh, sorry, I forgot the 2. So that becomes plus 2. And the derivative of that 12, which is a constant, equals 0. So now we end up with this whole equation, and we want to try to isolate the y prime. So we can do that by isolating this part right here. So we're going to end up with x times 2y times y prime. And I'm going to move everything to the other side, so I end up with negative 3x squared minus y squared, and that'll be minus 2. Now we can divide it out, so y prime ends up being negative 3x squared minus y squared minus 2, all divided by uh, 2xy. Let's plug in the point 1 for x, 3, negative 3 for y. And you end up with negative 3 times 1 minus the 9, that's 3 squared minus the 2, all over 2 times 1 times negative 3. And you end up with negative 14 over negative 6, which is 7 thirds. So y minus y1. So here's our point that we're going to use to write the equation of the tangent line. Oh, well, they just wanted the slope, so here is the slope. If I asked for the equation of the tangent line, you can take that the next step and just plug in this point that you know. So y plus 3 ends up being 7 thirds times x minus 1. Okay, so for number 5, what we have on number 5 is it says the limit as x goes to 25 of 5 minus root x over x minus 25. Okay, so we always start on these limits with a direct substitution approach. And if I directly substitute it right in here, I'll get 0 at the bottom. In fact, I'll also get 0 at the top, which is indeterminate. Later, you're going to learn a way to a shortcut for these indeterminate ones. But for now, here's what you're going to do on this. This is another trick problem. They're trying to get you to see if you can understand that you don't need to have this as squared to factor. You guys are used to seeing a squared minus b squared factor into a minus b, a plus b. Well, you can factor a minus b as well. This just becomes a square root of a minus a square root of b, square root of a plus square root of b. So that's just another little trick there. And that's what I'm going to do to that bottom part. I'm going to factor it in that method, so I'll get x square root of x minus 5, square root of x plus 5. On the top, I end up with 5 minus root x. And we want the limit as x goes to 25 of that. Well, over here, if I just flip this around, this is going to end up being negative times root x minus 5. And on the bottom, I have root x minus 5 root x plus 5. Those reduce out, so I end up with neg the limit as x goes to 25 of negative 1 over root x plus 5. That's going to end up being, now I can directly substitute it in, and I'll end up getting negative 1 tenth as the limit. Okay, so for the next set of problems, you will need a calculator on these. And for number one, it says, if the rate of 2x cubed increases at twice the rate of 6x squared increases, what is the value of x? On these problems, the key word is this, a rate, and it's the rate of each of these. Since it's the rate of each of them, I want the derivative of this. So d dx of this is the rate. So this ends up being a rate of 6x squared. And the rate of this one is, again, the derivative with respect to x of this 6x squared 
and that comes out to be 12x. Now, it says the rate of this increases at twice the rate of the other one. So I could set up an equation that compares these two, and that equation would be 6x squared increases at twice the rate of 12x. Now, to solve this, you don't want to just divide by x because you're going to leave out a possible solution. So bring everything to the same side. So this becomes 24x on this side. So 6x squared minus 24x equals 0. And now you can factor this into 6x, and then you end up with x minus 4. So your two solutions are x equals 0 and 4. Okay, number 2. It says, suppose f of x equals the absolute value of 4x minus 8. Is f of x differentiable at x equals 2? If you graph this, you will see that there is a kink at x equals 2. So this graph does look like this where it touches over here at 2, and it's an absolute value v. So there's where you see that kink. So it is not differentiable at x equals 2. But is it continuous at x equals 2? Yes, it is continuous because you could tell by the graph it does not. You can trace the whole graph without having to pick up your pencil. That's one way of saying it. What's the limit as x goes to 2? Well, you have to check it from the right and compare it to the left. And if they both match, then it does have a limit. And in this case, the right and left do match, and that limit is 0. Okay, moving on, number three, and this is the last one. If f of x equals f of x minus x over f of x, and f of 2 is 5, f prime of 2 is negative 4, and g prime of 2, then g prime of 2 equals what? Well, since we're asked for the derivative of g right here, that means um, this should actually be a g of x right there in the problem. So that is a typo on the worksheet. So let's take a look at that and fix that. So that should be a g of x right there. Now, they're asking me to find g prime of x. That means I need to take the derivative of that. So that becomes, we're going to end up using the quotient rule. So that's the bottom times the derivative of the top, which will be f prime of x minus 1 because I took the derivative here, and I took the derivative of that x. So first, the bottom times the derivative top minus the top, which is f of x minus x, times the derivative of the bottom, which will be f prime of x, all over the bottom squared. Now we just plug in values. f of x, so f of 2, that's what we're looking to find, f of 2 is 5, times f prime of x. Well, f prime of 2 is negative 4, so that'll be negative 4 minus 1, minus f of x, so that's 5, minus x, which is 2, times the negative uh, f prime of x, which is that negative 4 all over f prime of x. So f prime of 2 is negative 4. This should be f of x, sorry, down here. This should be f of x. Let's clean that up. That should be f of x times the bottom squared, which was just an f of x. Okay, sorry about that. So f of 2 was 5, and we're going to square that 5. So this ends up being... Uh, when you clean it up, negative 25 plus 12 over 25, which is negative 13 over 25. All right, so go ahead and uh, I would make sure you review all these problems because these are the ones uh, that students typically miss on the final um, from this first semester. So good luck studying and uh, make sure you subscribe.